today we are going to make this armband which is an exercise armband and I'm going to be showing you how to crochet it. It's fairly easy with a little bit of tricky finishing off at the end but it's extremely useful and I'm very excited about this pattern. So when it comes to what yarn to use for this project, it's something I've thought about for a very long time and I've also made about 10 different ones of these and tried many types of yarn. So what I would like you to mainly think about is it needs to be either fully acrylic and stretchy yarn or a mix of cotton and acrylic and it must have some stretch in it. Now, in terms of thickness, I've tried a lot of different yarns. This one that I made is the last one that I've made and probably the one I'm happiest with. This yarn is from Himalaya and it's called Cylinder Stretch Yarn. Um, what I've done in the pattern, I've said one ball, but you will have to wind off the ball because you do need, so you can either buy one or two balls probably easier if you buy two but more expensive. I've used a double strand like this. This is quite thin and a little bit stretchy and it works very well with this 2.5 millimeter hook. So that is one that I would highly recommend. It comes in a lot of colors. It's a bit more available than some of the other yarn that I've tried. So highly recommend this one. Um, if you can't get hold of this one, if you're in America, one that I haven't tried, but one that sounds very good is the Burnett Baby Soft, and it's a mixture of cotton and acrylic. That actually sounds really good. Another one that I have tried that I'm very happy with is the Hobby Acacia. I'm sorry, I don't have the label, but the Hobby Acacia yarn is very easy to get from Hobby. They sell it all over the world there's a lot of colors it's a little bit it's not so stretchy when you're just looking at the yarn and you don't have to use double with this you can just use a single yarn so one ball is enough to make this project you may even have some in your stash and the good thing about the hobby acacia is that when you make it it is then a little bit stretchy if you see here and it works up really well i just had some very pale colors so i wasn't super happy with the pale i think this project's probably better darker but in terms of working up and ease of use and also ease of purchasing the hobby acacia is highly recommended you can get it from australia you can get it from anywhere in the world because they ship globally um, I'm not sponsored by them anymore. I used to be, so I'm just recommending it as one of the yarns that worked really well. And then the third yarn that I tried, this is quite hard to work with, but produces a really amazing stretch. It's called the Elise Diva Stretch Bikini Yarn. Again, I used a double thickness. Again, you'd probably only need one ball, but you should wind off half the ball. And another thing to remember is that you do need a few other things for this project. As always, 2.5 millimeter crochet hook and scissors and a tapestry needle, all necessary things for most projects. With this project, you've got a couple of different things that you need. For the screen, you obviously need something. Now I use, this is waste plastic. You can see the dimensions of the rectangle in the pattern. I haven't got them to hand right now, but I've written the size of the rectangle. You basically just need a rectangle of clear, fairly firm plastic. Now, I think this was from a box, a plastic box, like a shirt box or a chocolate box, that type of thing. So I basically, I'm just recycling some kind of plastic. I think the screen is necessary. If you don't put the screen on, the armband is going to be very floppy around the screen and the phone could fall out. It's not as secure. Plus this is waterproof. It makes the armband just so much more professional and so much more useful. The other thing that you need is uh, some Velcro. You need a 10 inch piece of Velcro that you're gonna cut in half. When I say Velcro, you've got the rough side and the smooth side and you put them, you sew them onto the armband uh, like this. And then this goes through the hole there and goes over and this keeps it really secure on your arm and make sure when you sew on the velcro it's right to the edge there so there's no bit hanging over 
okay so you need some velcro the more heavy duty the better now velcro is the name brand that's your really expensive one you can get cheaper ones doesn't really matter what you buy as long as it's strong enough now we're making it strong enough by actually sewing it onto the band you can get the ones where you just stick them on you can stick them on but they probably won't stay so you do need to sew it on so just be aware that in this project you do need as I've said, tried to say very clearly, you do need to do some sewing or ask somebody else just to sew those couple of seams for you. All right, then we're about to get started. And one other note is at the start of the project, what I want you to do is cut off two lengths of yarn, about 30 centimeters long. You're going to use these at one point to add a little bit to the other end you're just going to chain six so you really just need enough yarn to chain six and then you're going to fasten off and you do that twice so just at the start cut off a piece of yarn if you've only bought one ball i suggest you wind off half the ball and if you're using double you need both two little balls but in total you really only need because these balls have so much in them if you're using this stretch yarn one ball is enough and the same with the acacia you can just wind off half the ball if you are using double well with the acacia you're only using one strand so you don't have to wind off any except you do need to cut off these little pieces at the start you need these little pieces a bit later on and at one point in the video because I made that before this I say a completely separate ball of yarn but what I mean is actually this small piece of yarn that you've wound off okay let's get started First of all, tie a knot and chain 20 chains. I've done 14 so far, so I'll do the last six with you. 15, 16, 17, drops stitch, 18, 19, 20. So you've got 20 chain. Then you're going to single crochet into the third stitch like that and you're going to single crochet into every stitch until you get to the end so that's pretty simple isn't it just keep doing single crochet in every stitch notice that I don't try to get it through both layers I just literally put it through one there right I'll see you at the end of the row Right, this is at the end of the first row. Then you're going to chain one and you're just going to keep working single crochet rows until your piece measures 12 inches. Now, 12 inches was the measurement around my arm and that was 78 rows. If you're making it for someone with a larger arm, you could make the strap longer. So perhaps measure around their arm and if it's larger than 12 inches, I recommend you do some more rows. It's fairly forgiving. The strap does stretch a bit. So I think that this size with 78 rows should fit most arms. So here is my piece after I've done 78 rows, 12 inches long. So you can see that it's very straight along the edges. So when you do your final stitch, make sure you go into the turning chain right at the end there and do chain one every time you turn. So that's the strap section. And the next thing we're going to do is do the edging around the strap section. So to do the edging around the strap section, all you're going to do is single crochet and you're going to do a single crochet into the line above every stitch there. So put your hook into the natural kind of hole and work fairly loosely. So into the line right above, into the hole above that line. And then you're going to get a very even edging so you're going to do this all the way down the side of the strap and then at the end of the strap you're going to single crochet across into every stitch there so it's going to be 18 stitches and then you're going to do the same single crochet all around till you get to the end so you're going all around the piece 
okay so i'm going to do this now and i'll show you my piece at the end of this right so this is what it looks like after you've gone around the edges just a couple of points um, around the corners don't do any extra stitches then i want you to stretch it a little with your fingers if you do extra stitches it'll stick out and another point is if it bunches up a little bit if it bunches up too much, your tension is too tight. If it's a little bit, you can stretch it with your fingers and it should work out very smoothly if you do the stitches into every line, as I said. So at the end of this piece, we are here and we're ready to increase. We're going to do the increasing section now from here up to there. Okay, that is the next section. Next, we're going to be increasing for seven rows doing this section here, which is quite a sharp increase. So to do that for the next seven rows, you're going to single crochet two into the first and last stitch of the row. So you're going to chain one and then do a single crochet. Make sure you do it into the first stitch, not the edging stitch. So one and two into the first stitch and then single crochet all the way across and then one and two into the final stitch. Chain one, turn around and repeat six more times until you have 30 stitches. So I'll just finish that row. So just single crochet to the end of the row. and just working two stitches into the last so two stitches into the first and last stitch and you're going to have a sharp increase until you get to 30 stitches and i'll show you that in a minute so now we're nearly at the end here so i'm doing two stitches into the final stitch and then chain one and then I'm going to do two stitches again into the first and last stitches for the next six rows. Right so this is after we've done the seven increasing rows it's very extreme you've done one at each end for seven rows you've now got 30 stitches. What we're going to do now is add on a bit there and a bit there to make it into this square shape. So you're going to add on a bit and what I want you to do is check the size of your phone because I've made it for the size of an um, iPhone 12. If you've got say a bigger wider iPhone or even a Google phone it might be a bit longer so you might want to add a couple of extra stitches. So what I'm going to do to add the stitches at this end I'm going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and that is actually adding six stitches plus a turning chain. Then I'm going to pull out my hook and leave that yarn there and then we're going to get a separate ball of yarn and we're going to add some stitches to the other end and then fasten off and then we're going to work through all the stitches. So to add them to the other end, just put your hook into the final stitch there. And oh, it's rather tight. Pull it through. You can tie it in a knot if you want. And then I'm just going to chain six and fasten off. One, two, three, four, five, six. And cut that fasten off so you've got this little tail hanging out there and we've got one hanging out there so we're making this wider so now what we're going to do is get the yarn out of the way I'm going to turn the work around and put my hook back on the original yarn and I'm going to single crochet into the second stitch and single crochet all along there right to the end of the new stitches and you should have 42 stitches in total so I'll do that now 
and I'll come back on the camera in a minute. Right, so this is what it looks like after you've worked that first row into the chain. You've got 42 stitches. Then we're going to now work the back across the back here. So you can see we've got a whole number of stitches of rows here. We're going to work 24 more rows on these 42 stitches, just single crochet, chain one at each end when you turn. So 24 more rows, so it's going to be up like this. And I'm going to skip to that next section. Now, if you do have a wider phone, at the end of those 24 rows, I'd measure it on your phone and just see if it fits, if it's wide enough for the back of the phone to fit across that. If it's not, then you might need to do a few more rows. See you after 24 rows of 42 stitches. Right, so this is after I've actually worked 22 rows. I'd work 24 rows, as I said before, if I was using this thinner yarn, which is the Hobby Acacia. But in this case, I was using the Brighton yarn, which is from Spotlight in Australia, a quite a thick cotton acrylic. So I only did 22 rows um, what you should do is measure your phone this is a slightly smaller phone I'm using the phone to make this video so I can't show you my actual phone but it should you should have a bit on either side and it should measure approximately three and a half inches or nine and a half centimeters uh, depending on the size of your phone of course so what we're going to do next is we're going to slip stitch down here because we're going to decrease you can see that decrease there we're decreasing back in to match the other side but in this case we're making this hole which is now folded over making this hole that this strap is going to go through and fasten okay so the next thing you do is to turn your work and you chain one at the end of that previous stitch, a previous row. Then you're just going to slip stitch like this. So just pulling it through, not wrapping the yarn around, just pulling through, putting it in, pulling the yarn through, and then just pulling through the stitch. That's two, and then three, four, five. So this is a way of decreasing. So that's six, where it looks just like a little bit of a flat row. And then you're going to chain one. And then you're just going to single, single crochet 30. So remember, we've got 42 stitches minus six here. And then minus six at the end, we're going to single crochet 30. So then we've got gaps at either end. And then we're going to do a couple of rows, then make a space, a hole for the strap to go through. Okay, so single crochet 30. And I'll meet you back here after that. So before we increased from 18 stitches up to 30, and then we added six on each end. Now we're just going to decrease three times. So I've already done one. So I've got I've gone from 30 stitches there. We did the slip stitch before and then we didn't work the end. So decrease on either end by skipping a stitch and then decrease two more times. So 26 on the next row and then 24 on the next row. And then we're going to work two rows without decreasing and then we'll be making this hole so at the moment you're doing this little bit where you're doing a bit of decreasing and then two straight rows so I think it's six rows in total sorry five so three rows decreasing and then two more rows next we're going to make this opening for the strap so the way you do that is we're basically going to make a chain and that's going to make a hole. So first of all, 
you work three single crochet so you've done chain one at the end from the previous row one two three then you're going to chain 18 skip 18 stitches and single crochet in the final three stitches of the row so I'll do that with you one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen now basically you just have to look at the last three stitches you don't even have to count when you skip 18 because you just know you're going to work into the last three stitches just make sure that your chain is not twisted just make sure it's straight and then find count backwards from the end one two three stitches and then single crochet into the last three stitches so at this point you've made a hole and it looks like this now you're just going to work back again you're going to start off with three single crochet you will have done chain one at the end of the previous row now count very carefully you want to get 21 stitches in total don't let any little chains hide here so you should have three in the first section and then work very carefully into your chain sometimes you have to really push the hook in but you've got this small I love this small yellow hook it's very pointy so work 18 stitches into here and then three at the end so you've got 24 stitches in total then you're going to work four more rows of single crochet on these 24 stitches so I'm going to show you that at the end of this row plus four more rows so here is what your work looks like after you've done the four rows and you've done one row over the chain now I hope you are able to get 24 stitches sometimes you have to really look for that chain so next we're going to actually going to fold this over and we're now going to be working along the front I'm going to show you one I've made earlier so you'll see that so far you've done the strap you've done the back you've done one strap hole now we're going to do another strap hole and then we're going to do the front section which then folds over like this on the top and then we join all that together so you see the bit that you're doing now is where we fold this so we're doing the same thing again that means that you repeat the row that you did before where you work single crochet sorry three single crochet chain 18 and then three single crochet again so we'll show you at the end of that so I've repeated what we did before where we did three single crochet chain 18 three single crochet now I'm going to go back and work that row so you're going to work three and then 18 into the chain and then three again and I'll show you what that looks like then we're going to decrease again and get on to the front section so this is after one row now we're actually going to I think I said decrease before but we're going to increase so you can see here what we're going to do again is increase three times at each end of the row so one you're going to go from 24 to 26 stitches then 28 stitches then 30 stitches so three rows and then we're going to work on the front section so you're actually nearly done apart from finishing there is literally just this little bit left to do 
Right, so I've increased three times now, so we've got 30 stitches. It's looking pretty weird, isn't it? So this is what happens now. You can see how this folds over to make where the strap goes through and it's double, so it's quite strong. So now we're going to be going across here for the front section and you'll see in this other one, so the front is going to look like a frame, like a photo frame, because that's where the phone can be seen through. And that's the back. So we've done the back. We're now working on the front. What we are going to do now is increase six stitches at each end like we did before to make the front section. So first of all, we are going to chain seven. So I did one already because I automatically do that at the end two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chain seven and then we're gonna drop that and leave that there and then get a completely separate ball of yarn, which I may have been doing something with before. So we're gonna get a completely separate ball of yarn, join to the other end and add six chain and then fasten off. So we've made 42 stitches again so it corresponds with the back section. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see we've now got, we're back to 42 stitches. So when it folds over, it's going to fit on the front. So we fasten off that extra ball, get rid of that. And then to correspond with this section here, you're going to work five rows of single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to do these top sections here and the final section, and then you're done, except for putting it together. So you're nearly there. So now I put my hook back into the original yarn where I did the chain seven. And I'm just going to single crochet across all the 42 stitches and then do four more rows after that. So I'll come back after I've done that. So the five rows are complete. And now we're going to work on just five stitches here to create this top section across the top. So, which looks like the side, but it will be the top because it will go this way. So first of all, I'm just going to single crochet five. I've already chained one at the end there. So one, two, three, four, five, chain one, turn around, and you're going to keep going on these five stitches, one, two, three, four, five, chain one. You're going to keep going back and forth until you've done, let's have a look at this one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen rows, okay? So I'll join you again when you've completed 14 rows on these five stitches and show you what that looks like. Then we'll join the yarn to the other end and do the same thing. After you've completed this side, you chain 32 stitches, then you join it up with the other side, complete the five remaining stitches to join up your little picture frame and then you'll work a few more rows and you're done making the main piece but there is a fair bit of putting it together so I've just done those five second single crochet there so you can see this is like a frame then you're going to do Six more rows. Once you've done those six more rows, we'll be ready to join everything together.
Right, so after we've completed this sixth row, you can see it looks like a picture frame and we're done. Now the next step, which is going to be instant in the case of the video, is to weave in all your ends. If you look at the strap, you can tell which is the wrong side. So that is the right side, this is the wrong side. So now you're going to weave in all of your ends onto the wrong side and then we'll start putting it together. Just a little note to show you how I weave in the ends. This is the wrong side. I've just put the needle through like that. Then I'm just going to thread the tapestry needle through. And if there's any left, I'll just snip it off. Now I'm gonna do that with all the ends. Right, now all my ends are magically woven in. One thing I did forget to say was it's a little bit harder with this piece because it's single crochet and it's very dense fabric. You really have to push that needle in hard when you're getting doing the end. So I hope you're able to do that. The next step in putting this all together is we're going to do a single crochet edging around this square. You're going to join the yarn here work 32 single crochet, eight single crochet here on each of the lines here, and then in the corners, 32 here, and then another eight there. So I'll show you, it doesn't matter which corner you start in, you can start in any corner, just place the hook in there, pull the yarn through and just get started with the single crochet. I don't do a knot because I find it's going to be fastened by the time I come around to the end. It should be fine. You can knot it if you feel more comfortable, but it's just going to add a bit more bulk. So I just work directly into the stitches here. There should be 32 because there were five on each end. You had 42 stitches. So just making a little border around our frame because it basically looks better. And then when I'm sewing the plastic on with the machine, I actually sew down the line of this border to make it look very neat. So I'm going to continue working around and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Right, so next what you do is, I'm actually gonna show you how to crochet it together because I think it's probably easier for crochets. It makes it a little bulky, but it does make it quite strong. And as long as the strap fits through, that should be fine. So you've you should have this and then you fold that in half and what we're going to be doing it's slightly fiddly we're going to be crocheting these two layers together okay and it pretty much has to be single crochet i've tried it with slip stitch which doesn't really work as it doesn't kind of cover over the layers so you put your hook in right at the corner Pull your yarn through, leave a bit of a tail so you can finish that off later. And what you're doing is you're doing single crochet over these two layers here into each stitch. So it's you've got to really get your hook into both stitches and then pull the yarn through and then yarn under and you can see it's fairly fiddly. Pull it over the top. The reason I wanted you to leave quite a long end is that you can pull it kind of quite tight as well. So then you just work your way across, hold it with your fingers like this. Just work into each stitch. Don't do any extra stitches at the corners because we don't really want any extra bulk. Just work your way across making sure with your fingers that the stitches are even so when you get to the other end that you don't have any left over. So you're going to single crochet across and back and then I'll show you what mine looks like. So off to do a bit of single crochet like this to join this together. You can see at the start that's made this simple join now. Right, so here we are with the finished seam and what I've done is I've actually tied those two ends together and I'm going to do a sneaky thing and put them through to the wrong side now. Um, so I'm going to put the needle in. This is obviously our right side and I'm going to thread them 
through to the wrong side where we can sew them in on that side all neatly and they're not bothering us out here so pushing that one through as well then the next thing we're going to do now if we're not this one I'm not going to use plastic I'm showing you just the hand sewing version without the plastic which won't be as waterproof with the screen but it is a lot easier to do so really all we have to do now that we've done that is we've just got to attach this bit here and go around the edges and then we just need to stick some velcro on so that's the super easy way of doing it with the machine we do the same things but a little more professional we will add some plastic and sew that onto the frame so that the phone just does have a plastic frame there okay but the next thing we're going to do is to crochet from this edge all around here along the top uh, we're going to leave the top open so we're going to crochet along there and down here and then we're going to go along this edge down there along the bottom and up the other side so we're basically just going to do single crochet all around the edge and then this particular one will be done okay you can see I've finished this and I'm just going to fasten off the yarn there and with the last stitch what I like to do to make a clean finish is fasten the yarn off and then you can do what's called an invisible join where you go into that first stitch and pull it through and then go backwards and pull it through this way so it should make that join a little bit neater it's not especially neat this one um, so that's what it's going to look like then you would weave in that end and then we're going to do a little bit of sewing we're going to now sew this part where the strap goes and I'm going to show you how I hand sew it and then also how I machine sew it So I've just sewed the two seams here. I've sewed around here the plastic screen on like that. You can see that on that side. If there was any excess, I'd cut around the edges, but it fitted quite well. I'm not 100% happy with the straightness of this and the black one actually did it again. Um, the top is slightly on an angle, so I, I'm tempted to actually unpick that and do that one more time to make it a bit better. Um, the other seam I did was sewing around this strap section there and next what I'm going to do is because the phone takes a bit of space I'm going to sew from the top of the band there straight down here to there and that's the final seam before sewing the velcro on and actually it works out best that there's two pieces of velcro like one side say that's a rough side one piece and two piece or a really thick piece if you can find it and then you leave a little gap and then put the other adjoining pieces here right to the end if possible I've done this strap on this beige one a bit longer than some of the others because I was adjusting it sort of in case you needed it for a larger person so I'm kind of evolving as I go on, but in the pattern, it's all very clear, I hope. 
All right, I'll show you the finished product soon. So this is after I've sewed the third seam. I normally sew it from there to there, but with this one, I decided to experiment with sewing it from the top to the bottom. You are going to crochet, single crochet around the edge there. So the next thing we do is single crochet around there and then around here and then around the bottom up to there. Okay, so that's all we've got to do and just sewing on the Velcro next and we're nearly done. Okay, so if you've made it to the end of this video, you deserve a medal. Um, that's very impressive because it's very long and probably very boring video. If there are any inconsistencies between the video and the pattern, I have tried my best. Please don't come at me. Um, there may be slight inconsistencies, but I've done it over a long period of time at different times. Hopefully you have successfully completed an armband. The black one in the end was the one I was happiest with. I find black to be the most kind of socially acceptable color for people to wear these things. You might want to make a really bright one though. And the most effective Velcro I found in the end was doing two stripes like this of the thin Velcro, unless you can get a really thick one. Um, with a little gap in between and make sure it goes right to the end and this one probably wears the best um, and as you can see I have tried it in a number of different colors so good luck if you have any questions you can always email me at crochetlovemelbourne at gmail.com and I'm happy to answer any things enjoy I hope your armband is useful and works really well thank you